No, okay. Um, so I will I will go ahead and I'll share my screen a little bit. Um, and okay, so just to recap, so I'm using REM, and I guess we should all kind of use REM in this thing, which uh, just helps you keep track of packet versions, um, package versions, and library versions and stuff. So that if you didn't want to overwrite your deep layer for your various other things and you're not used to using REM, you might want to use this. Um, REM has some stuff in there, but it has like a REM block file, and that tells you, like, um, or that tells whoever's using the project. Like these are the libraries you need, and these are the versions, and you won't have all your others. So oops. you reactivate your rem. And now, if I do something like um, per and in and all the packages, well, it says no. Um, and it would say yes otherwise, because I do have per. But we load B player um, and the so one of the questions last week for anyone who wasn't here last week or doesn't remember this is well what does filters um preserve argument do like what's the point in it and we noticed a couple of things like you cannot call dot by and dot preserve at the same time um but we weren't sure just from reading the documentation exactly why you would want to do this or what it's for um so yeah it says It kind of hints at why it says like when the grouping structure is re recalculated um, and otherwise it will keep keep the groups. Um, but I think a practical example is a good one. So I just reinstalled ggplot to look at, well, how might I group um, Mount Cars as data so that I can show what dot preserve does. And if you look at the, the plot here on the right side, um, when sil is when sil equals eight, um, there are lots of horsepower above 200 and there are for no other groups so if we group by sill um and then filter for horsepower greater than 100 and then um we make some kind of summary table well we just have one group um in our results and the whole point of dot preserve is say when you would have lost groups is to keep them in and to keep them in as nulls and then in your summary table, you're going to have all of the groups again. Um, but the groups that didn't meet the condition or had no rows that meet the condition, well, their value in whatever your summary is, is going to be NAN. And I still couldn't really figure when I would ever want to do that. But I guess if you're writing a report or something, um, you might not. You've, and you've got groups that are in lots of different tables and you're summarizing in different ways where well, you might want to keep them all in just so the person viewing it can kind of see what's happened. Yeah, no, um, me too. I was, I was like, <laughs> I had no idea what was going on with Preserve either. Um, what I will do is I will write so, so that we can start getting used to stuff like this. Um, well, actually, well, it wouldn't work with by, would it? Um, so... If we summarize like this, they all get dropped. Um, let's make it a tibble. Do I even have tibble? Um, yes, yeah, so everything gets dropped actually. Even the, that's interesting. I should have maybe come back to this. So like, we don't even have the thing that we are grouping by anymore, which is, and if that's intended. Um, but anyway, let's try, try not to get too sidetracked with random things that I never thought of looking at that <laughs> probably don't break anything, but seem to break it when you're streaming yourself. Um, but yeah, that's the that's what um, Preserve does. And that's kind of like, I think that's the main reason why you'd want to do it or why you'd want to use it. Um, anyone have anything on on Preserve or like, this thing that just happened here. Does anyone know like why this happened? Let's say if it's greater than 50. So Jack, so, sorry, I wasn't uh, here last week, but uh, what what does the buy actually actually do in this in this case? Yeah, okay. So uh we kind of went over this and we're gonna go over this lots of times because it's in um it's in all the functions now. Yeah. 
But it, I, mean, I, I get it for the other ones. It's just for filter. It seems I don't know. Doesn't seem like it quite fits. Yeah. Um, well, what it's what it should be doing is replicating this thing. Um, and you wouldn't really. This is why oh, I, was I got it. Okay. Last week is I was trying to figure out. Well, why would this? What would this do with filter? Like. Um, Oh, sorry, for preserve, that was. Um, but yeah, buy is just like a, because you, you could do, say, um, the reason, sorry, I got sidetracked there. Uh, the reason you might want to do filter with buy is if you say like, um, like the horsepower is greater than the mean horsepower, well, you might have some really imbalance. You kind of see here, right? Everything is either eight or six in sill. Um, but if you go dot by equals um, I guess it's just sill. Well, now we've got all of the ones within the groups. So within the sill column, we've got four, six, and eight, and we've got all of the rows that are higher than their group mean rather than the overall mean. And if you think if you are comparing like something that just is, I think we all kind of aware of like height differences. I think there's a day set somewhere. If you were looking at like male and female heights where the average is a few inches apart, if you filtered just on the above average height, your data set's going to be nearly all male. Whereas if you uh, do dot by equals male or gender or whatnot, then you're going to get the above average people within their gender, um, which is why you might want to use dot by um, when filtering. Um, Jack, I have a question about this. It's a slight yeah. tangent, so if you don't want to take it, feel free to ignore. But last week, um, I meant to ask it in the chat because at some point you mentioned, you know, you run into problems if you mutate or uh, or like filter not equals or something and you have NAs, right? Sometimes you are only trying to remove, you know, NAs. I, I feel like when I deal with NAs, I deal with long case wins <laughs> or create a separate data set. But what would you do? What would you be doing? What would, if if you had some um, horsepowers that were missing? I guess you just in your mean statement is where you would deal with it here. Um, um, yeah. So if you didn't. So if you were like filtering. Um, so if we got like let's just make a little data frame. Um, you had some some like APIs if you're using them right, like the Reddit API or the I don't know Twitter API if you're doing text analysis from like those kind of sources. Well, they'll have like a username, and it might be like you know, Michael and then let's put Philippa, um, and then there could be like an NA, and it could be like source equals I don't know Twitter, Twitter, and then this is Reddit. Um, and if you do some kind of filtering on this, so if we print this table, you've got three rows with two columns, right? If you do something like, well, I don't want to see Michael, and you say username not equals Michael, uh, you also lose the NA. Yeah. Um, and this maybe doesn't look so bad right now, but what if this was like the text? This, I don't know. Not interesting. The kind of use your imagination. Um, but interesting. And you're you're actually then gonna do some stuff later, like G plot. I don't know. Like some stuff, yeah. right? And you're interested to say you're interested in the text column, you might have done some like tokenization with tidy text or done whatever you like. Well, now you don't have this interesting opinion from Reddit. And if you had 100,000 rows in your data set and 20,000 of them were from Reddit, well, by filtering like this, you think, well, I just got rid of any, any username that equals uh, Michael. But you didn't, you also got rid of all the NAs. Right. because they, they always evaluate to false because what this is really kind of saying isn't stuff that doesn't equal michael it's like stuff that equals false when i look for stuff that doesn't equal michael michael and it does sound like it should be the same but because of the way na's behave it's it's actually 
it can be different and it can be like expensively different depending on your data set right um, so what would you how would you rewrite that if you so want to do something like this if else is dot ma username or oh, sorry username equals um i don't know if that's even in the right place we'll just do it an a and otherwise username and then now you keep them right and it's like you okay. still know that this is an na if you did happen to have a username that was a that was NA already. Well, they just got duplicated in your data set a bunch of times. So you might want to put some, I don't know, like not NA. I don't know. Okay. But like, there's no easy way to do that within the filter statement itself, just like there is for mean, where you can do like na.rm equals true. There's no easy ah, way to with, within filter. No, I don't I don't think there okay. is. Um okay, yeah. Uh, Around so I just, but I always felt like they're clunky. So yours looks nice, but <laughs> okay. Thanks. No worries. I mean, yeah, it would be it would be something that is something I think to flag up to the deep lie team or the tidyverse team is that there are actually lots of cases in the wild where you can accidentally filter out a bunch of things kind of accidentally. I mean, yeah, it does say here, right, to be retained, the row must reach a value of true for all conditions. And if you when you're as you get on and you've done something like this a bunch of times where you lost a bunch of data where you realize like okay stuff doesn't always evaluate to true and then then eventually you realize well na's don't evaluate to true right. um but it's it's maybe not yeah it's not like that it's you're not going to get that just from reading this right you're just going to get it from doing what i did which is making the mistake and trying to figure it out one time yeah um, exactly okay cool yeah that that might be worth noting down in the channel or something to like flag up um but okay so the main things today i thought we should look at were so i did put this here but deep lie by that might end up being its own thing and deep lie data masking because i thought my explanation was really bad last week and the docs are actually really good for data masking so we will take a look at that and i think it's pretty not straightforward but it's there's a really good explanation in the docs so we should rely on the docs but first is like uh, the slice family. So the slice family of functions, I think they're actually quite interesting. Um, there used to be a bunch of things like, I guess they're deprecated now, but it's like top, yeah, top frac and top n. Um, what else? There was maybe not fully deprecated, but like sample n. It's, yeah, they're superseded. Um, so are a bunch of them. So these these functions, like they can seem really basic, but they also there's a lot you can do with them. Like just one interesting use case, I suppose, before we actually look at them is if you've got your data frame mount cars here, and it's in a particular order, and you wanted to sample that, but you didn't want to lose any. Well, you can go. Oops, can you not? Did you mean, okay, yeah, so you have to name the arguments like that. Um, but this, like, this just rejigs them all for you, you're just like randomly sampling them, right? Um, but you're doing you're doing a sample of the whole the whole length. So you're getting them all, you're just flipping them all about. It's quite like a nice way to, to reorder stuff if you ever need to, because um, otherwise you use it like n equals 10. And you can get like group samples, you can go like still. Um, Okay, so it's oh yeah, and in, in slice it's not dot by and the rest it is, which is or is it never dot dot by? No, it is there. Yeah, it's like I think I saw a thread on this in the issues somewhere, and there was like kind of a discussion internally about it. So I I imagine this will become dot by, but no promises. Um but okay, let's actually like go through here. So I want to stop talking for a minute and ask, does anyone actually use slice and like head, tail, min, max sample for anything? Like, is this a fun, are these, is this family of functions something people are really familiar with or is it quite new? I'd use the slice sample to just do some sampling. Uh... Mm -hmm. And do you, do you use like, group samples and stuff when you slice uh yes i think i i think i did yeah 
Yeah, cool. Because it's, it's really useful for that. Um, but let's say the actual slice. And I would say this is the function I personally never use, just slice. I think this is like, okay, so lets you index by rows by their integer locations. And I was thinking, well, I never actually use this. So, because I would always, personally, I would do something like this. And this is kind of stupid, but I would do... Um, But like if I wanted the 10th row, I'd do something ridiculous like that. Um, but it seems like slice, let's, I'll leave that in. But it seems like slice lets you get row numbers. But then when I was trying this just like a minute ago, it wasn't actually working. So it's, wait, what? Slice 10. That's no good. Okay, so it gives me a null. Um, and so looking here, in the dplyd docs and there are some examples and when you put run examples from their examples well it gives you a null and i wonder if this is broken recently or something um even when you set it as an actual integer instead of just a double like and in their examples it prints null now i don't know if this is something weird just with my computer so let's try can i do this here does any does anyone know like yeah see it seems to work here or it does in their examples oh so I've got some chats sorry it's old chat I'm fine with moving on to slice in the in general I could it. I can multitask you can. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um yeah I'm I'm not so good at multitasking um but okay like in their examples you can you can slice by integer, but in mine, you just can't. Um, and I have no idea why. So, unless somebody else knows what's going on here, um, I'm sort of, I'm a bit spent on, on slice and why, just why it doesn't seem to work. Um, but perhaps more interestingly, because if that's just an issue on my computer somehow, well, there are still other arguments um, that are interesting, right? Um, and let's take a look at them. So we've got obviously the data, just like we had in all of the data frame functions. Um, now we've got ellipsis and in slices case, and this is mainly just for slice, I think, it says that it's, yeah, so either you, if it were working, you'd be able to go like this and you'd be able to say, well, I don't want one out. Um, and that would get rid of just that one. Um, or you'd be able to say, well, I do want one out, but you'd also be able to say, I want two out and three out. And you'd keep one, two, three, because you're just feeding them in as ellipsis. I would guess, because of the way select and stuff work, if you wanted to get rid of all of them, you'd have to do that. Because if you just did this, and it's a bit annoying that I guess I can't test it. Obviously, if you did this, you would get rid of one and then just have two and three. But then that would be the same thing as doing that anyway. So it wouldn't be that useful. I suppose the point is that you can do this stuff. So this works for me. Yeah, it's, uh, it seems to be working for other people too, which is, it seems to be bizarre. Um, oh yeah. Sorry. I'm just on posit clouds. I don't even know what I'm. <laughs> Could there be a namespace problem, Jack? Uh, like if you put. Um, yeah, I haven't even loaded DeepLayer, have I? Oh, have I loaded DeepLayer? Uh, I don't know if I did load DeepLayer, but let's, let's have a look. Um, fire. Oh, okay, nice. nice. Yeah, so what slides, what's the actual? You have so few packages loaded, so what were you getting? Yeah, I don't know, let's, uh, let's do session info. Um, it must be in one of these, because these are just what, 
but I did I did install ggplot um but okay if we they're like a deep flag base is this it hey okay, so this would seem to probably be to do with it and then it's slight and I would guess there's just a base slice function that none of us ever use but okay that well that's cool so now we can actually say well we can actually compare the oh, that doesn't work so do we have to minus oh that doesn't work because that's still there oh I'm doing this that is really weird um that would I would have to let's just trying not to jump ahead too much but dot the point with one and then we see yeah we lose one two three and if we wrap it in a vector oh yeah well that would be double negative in, so that would make sense okay so you can you can do it either way but if you do this presumably yeah you need to be doing all negative or all positive which is um Pretty interesting stuff. So I'm trying to keep up with the chat or something. Feel absolutely feel free to just like turn on your mic, stop me, and um we'll start reading some of the some of the whatever it is as and when it comes up. Um the rest of the arguments for slice. So the ellipsis lets you put in a bunch of rows. So if you wanted to, you could <laughs> presumably you could write all the rows that you want, although I think using things like between which we're going to get to later on so I won't go into would be would probably be better um oh so dot by and by so why does it have a comma are they aliases or something uh oh, okay so in some of the functions they're going to be dot by so in slice they're dot by ah maybe this was working earlier because I wasn't, I wasn't namespacing properly. Um, but okay, let's. What I wanted to do actually is you can use the formals function to get a list of functions arguments. So when you do something like this, it will print the arguments for you in a list. So then, if you get all of the slice functions and you want to see at a glance, well. Who, who shares arguments and who doesn't. Well, slice has four arguments in its function call. Slice, head and tail both have five, and that makes sense because they're like kind of brothers and sisters. And slice, max, min have eight. Slice sample has seven. So I think the most interesting ones are going to be slice, max and slice, min, as they have the most. Um, their their ellipsis and stuff, as far as I know, just works the same as slice. Um, yeah, dot by we've looked at quite a bit, um, but we could, I guess, as some people weren't here last week, we could just really quickly look at. Um, we'll say, uh, let's get row two and dot by equals still so that should give us yeah for each different one each different layer of the group we'd get the second index um if using slice but then if we were to do say slice max and min well okay did you mean to that's going to be quite annoying hmm oh uh, order by equals yeah so you have to we want horsepower and we want to say n equals I have to say, the fact that you can put in um, unnamed arguments differently in different functions and have by versus dot by in different functions of slice strikes me as not that great. Um, another, so you can see here, like there are three, there are three in sil of six. So a different argument that is in um, slice uh, slice max in particular is with ties and it's quite a nice one to use because if you're plotting stuff 
um, and you know you want exactly 20 rows. Well, if you don't use with ties equals true, oh, sorry, with ties equals false, you might get 50 rows or you might get 23 rows, depending on how similar the different rows in your data are. Whereas, yeah, when we do add with ties equals false, we return. I'm going to turn. It's actually not really enjoying mount cars not being a pibble. Um, but okay. Yeah, so now we have six rows, whereas if we comment out this line, we now have seven rows. And that's because there's a tie in the second place is horsepower. So or, uh, with ties is always a good one to keep track of. Um, funnily enough, we, uh, Rebecca, you're asking about filter having like an NA thing, and I haven't followed the comments. I'll look back at them later. Um, but slice. Uh, I have a small question in mm -hmm. N is equal. What is N is equal to, uh, to two is doing? Yeah. So N in slice max and slice min, um, and actually I think slice sample two and slice head and slice tail. N is the number of things you want to keep. So that's one thing we maybe didn't explain very well. Um, when you're using slice max, what it's um, doing, it's asking you for a column. Oh, and that's why you have by equals this is because, or is it? No, that's the group. Um, but basically what it's saying here is give me the top, the highest values of my order by column. So you'll normally, I think, when you're using this, have some kind of setup like this where you here you'd ask for the top two by hp so that will be the highest hp that there is and that will be the second highest and if you change this five well you're going to get the top five um by by horsepower because you've asked it to order by horsepower and that can look quite similar or it seems like it's worth pointing out that this is not the same thing. So slice head is just taking the head of the data frame, like the top five rows. And if we print the whole of the table, well, we see these five rows um, were what we were staying with here. Um, so slice max is like comparing the values within a column. Um, mm -hmm. And slice head is just taking the end top. Um, so when we were uh, using the buy, it was first grouping them and then taking the order. Okay. Yeah, and this is why it's this is why it's a little bit weird. Is like buy is not dot buy, like it is in the rest of the stuff or in a lot of the others. Um, but now, yeah, we're getting these, and this is almost the same as if we were to use the old way, right? Which is like group oh my god group by um sale and then slice max n equals five order by equals hp um but we would see in this one that the groups are preserved um whereas in this one because it's inline grouping they would not be preserved so it's okay. kind of slightly different um let's say one thing so let's see so if imagine no i won't do that because that's ggplot and we're not on ggplot yet so we will stick very much to this doc um yeah when you're slicing you can say give me like prop equals 0 0.25 um and so we'd switch that's why they're common. So you choose one of these two. You either take n or you take prop. And saying, give me the 25% you know, of the highest values. Um, so I should have uh, what did that. In this case, the top 25% of horsepower, they're all in cylinder. Um, and the flip side or the opposite, I guess, of slice max is slice min um and slice min is doing 
the opposite, right? So if we put n equal to two, and we put four to five as horsepower, well, we'll get the two lowest values of horsepower. And if we comment that out, then we will get the bottom 25% of values ordered by horsepower. Um, and again, you can keep going with these with ties or spots, and you might shrink your data frame slightly. Um, sampling weights. Okay, that's going to be for slice sample, I would guess. And uh, it's that, yeah, that's going to add up to one. So who, who does everyone, we covered all of the arguments. So with ties are done, ordered by we've done. Preserved we haven't done, but I think it's just the same as filter. Um, seems to have the exact same uh, explanatory text. Dot by and by. I still don't get why. Okay, it's just in some of the functions there, dot by, isn't it? So, yeah, in slice, there is dot by, and in the rest, there are by. Um, okay, that is, I still, I'll kind of die on this hill that I think that's quite, quite clumsy. Um, but those arguments, okay, so we could. Ah, okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it was when DeepLayer 1.1.0 was released, right? But then it's changed for all of the functions except slice, which retains the old way. Sorry, the, the new, the, these functions like slice head, uh, if we look at uh, their arguments, which I've saved in here, slice R, and then we go to slice head. Well, that has by, um, but then filter, uh, if we get formals, filter, hmm? oops, not help. We print their arguments. Well, filters is dot by, and like everything else is dot by, but then in slice, uh, for slice, you've got dot by. Um, I think it's just a little bit confusing. I'm sure if, oh, Oh, uh, so, okay. So they're even changing it for slice. It just hasn't gone live into 1.1.0. Oh, wait, so no, it isn't, yeah, it is in slice, but it's it's different in slice head, slice tail, slice min. Um, and I I suppose that is just because what is now order by, used to just be by perhaps and they just haven't got around to maybe changing maybe i probably shouldn't try to guess what they're up to or why they're doing it um but let's let's have a look at uh slice sample because that had it's got a couple of interesting arguments that maybe aren't in the rest um so If we want to do it, we've got the proportion, which we're going to look at. Uh, we've got by, which is just going to be like how to do the group sample. Weight by. Oh, yeah, okay, weight by. So when you've got uh, different groups, you're going to put in a you're going to put in a proportion for each group. If that makes sense. Um, okay, let, let's have a look at all of these in tow. So you got a nice mount cars table. And if we look for sample, um, if we put prop equals 0.5, we get half of the data back. Um, but we could also um, we could also get ten rows or you know, a number of rows. Uh, that's, and we have to n is a named argument, so you now can't put stuff like this because you do have to specify n equals something uh i would guess if you put n equals 10 you can't then put prop because you have to choose so let's see yeah you, you can't do both um that completely makes sense if we go 
phi equals still. So if we try to get a couple of each, um, and if we if we want to get like a bigger sample, so say we wanted to like do some kind of bootstrapping or data augmentation or something. In some of the groups, we might want to do something like this, but you can't because the well, it doesn't give you five hundred. Um, but if you put replace it with true, you get a much much bigger data frame. So you, it's kind of like um, what is this the base function sample, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so if you sample from one and O, and you put size equals twenty. Well, you can't do that in this one, so you have to put base equals true. Oops, you don't want to put a full stop there. Um, and when you do that, it will start giving you long, long lists, and it will just keep sampling them. Um, so I think that's the idea here. Although, funnily enough, this doesn't, and maybe this should raise an error, because I've asked it for 500 samples, and I've got back 32. Um, seems to be not ideal. And obviously, this is a toy example, and you'd never actually be doing this with the Mount Cars data set, probably. Um, but it does seem like if you ask for a sample more than the rows in the data frame and you have replace equals false, well, this function should. It seems like to me it should give you a like a an error. Um, Okay, we're grouping by SIL and we've got this argument, which is wait by and oh wait, is it for us? So providing the end or the number of rows. Oh wait. Okay, yeah. So we're gonna get we're gonna leave replace equal true and we're gonna wait by uh what do we what do we actually wait by there if we do this? I guess it'd have to be a column in the data set. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. So, but it says this must, eva must evaluate to, oh, okay. Right, so if we were to put like, um, like I don't know, it's not gonna know what to do with this, right? But let's see. Uh, wait by must have size seven, not three. Okay, nice. So if we add, um, it's kind of jumping down a little bit, but, Uh, so weight equals, and then we'll say like still equals four, and we'll give it 0 0.2, still equals six, not point four, and still equals eight, and we'll give that 0 0.4. Then is it saying that this will work? Okay, nice. Yeah, so you have to you have to have a column of the unique values must add up to one so that it mirrors some kind of probability or like follows the probability theory actions. That's, yeah, that's pretty cool, actually. Nice. Okay, um, so we've been through replace. We've, I mean, NARM, maybe we should just I don't really want to make a data set full of NAs. I, I'd gather, you know, it's just like the mean, median and stuff, NARM. Does anybody know about the, the NARM in here? Okay, now that is actually quite interesting. So if you're slicing the head or the max, well, not, probably slicing the head or the tails of some samples, and you're doing it by a column. Well, if you put NARM, and what's the default? NARM equals four. So it, it won't remove NAs. Um, but where was I reading? There is a thing. Um, there is a separate thing, which is like slice arranges the data. So if you do slice head, right, you'll get the, the top five rows. And at the bottom, you do slice tail, you'll get the bottom five rows. So they are like the actual inverse of one another. But if you do slice max and slice min, 
the, the top values of slice max, so the top values, the highest values, they'd be at the top, and then at the bottom, you'd have the lowest values. Um, but it will always put NAs at the bottom. And that's true even if it's slice max or slice min. So say your rows are arranged a certain way by slice max, slice min isn't the exact inverse because you'll keep the NAs at the bottom. Like they, their row numbers won't switch um, to the top. So that was quite interesting. And I think maybe that's in here. Um, does that ring a bell for anyone else? Because I'm sure I read about that quite recently. But I can't necessarily see it in here. Maybe it's in deep layer by, which we were maybe going to look at if we didn't look at uh, thing. But let's have a look. Hmm. If it's not in here, I really can't remember where I read it. Um, I go to deep. No, what I want is. I'm not actually sure how you'd find it in here. Um, hmm. Is it in the various? No, so I. I'd have to find it. Um, I'm not sure where it says, but it, it tells you that about, about slice and NAs. Um, yeah, the, the, the sort of like it's, I, I'm sure it's just something like slice or one of them. They now have order underscore by equals, right? And I think that just used to be by. So they didn't want to. No, that doesn't even make sense either. No, it, it just doesn't really make sense why it's like that, at least at the moment. Um, but okay, they're, they're, they're not the exact inverse and, um, of one another, max and min, but they're very close to being. I think that's the rest of the arguments. Um, I guess we could look at really quickly like a slice sample, a group sample. Um, let's go down again. See how that does work. Yeah, maybe we even looked at this already. Um, okay, I think, so the slice family, they're really useful. Um, and it's definitely, as a mental note for everyone, it, that'll be really good to come back to when we do ggplot, because I think there are quite a lot of times when you're plotting something that you want to use different arguments of slice, um, like with ties and what they do. Maybe a, a nice little thing is like, okay, say if I want to do, let give, give me the top values um, of horsepower, and I want the top uh, twenty. Well, if I now want, um, I could, I can like start chaining these things, and give me the minimum values though of I don't know what's even interesting in this data set, but like draft, and give me the top ten. Or the like the top 10 with the lowest values. So the bottom 10, you can start chaining these things together. Um, and when you've got a different type of data set, that can be really interesting. Or you're, you can even do like, first I want the top 50 of these, and then I want a different column, right? Um, in the top 20. And you can start doing nice, like broken down summaries by groups just by chaining together slice um, calls, same way you might have done in the past. Um, 
like top end with different things. Um, what I do want to check is for Slice Max actually, is there in top end there used to be a there used to be a weight argument. Um for, or there is a weight argument. Um in in the same way that there is for count. Um a weight was just by what hmm. Anyway, yeah, the, those slice functions, when you start calling them together and doing different things, obviously it's really helpful to be aware of their arguments, but those are pretty useful. And I think just for the last 12 minutes, we're gonna look at the deep layer data masking um, thing. So data masking, let's get it up here. It's, it's nicer to look at. Um, Rebecca, you asked like, well, where it keeps saying data masking um like what is it uh what's interesting about it this is not the right thing does anyone know how to go from the r studio here into where this is stored hmm. So data masking, um, one of the things I really didn't want to mention last week when I was trying to like explain it on the fly, Rebecca, is like different environments. Um, and the reason I didn't want to mention that is because environments are kind of a more confusing, it's like explaining something with something that's more complex than the thing itself. Um, in a way, you do just have to have some awareness of environments and things to, to fully understand it. But if you think about um, when you're not in a data masking environment, you need if you want to refer to the columns um, like mean of mount cars MPG, you have to do no or oh, that is. It, well, it doesn't even like it. Um, but if we were to summarize, um, what's happened here? Oh, I yeah. Whoops. <laughs> when I was playing, let me. Um, I run some code that is. That's, Yeah, I was doing something really silly earlier up here. Um, for not, I wouldn't say for fun, but to maybe draw on something later on and forgot to undo it, like this stuff here. Um, okay, so now I just don't have one. On This weird. Ah, okay, yeah. So in, I am just going to restart my session because I'm not sure why it won't let me reinstantiate the thing. But then, okay, in here, uh, the data masking when we want to like do something normally we need to do we need to do this right um if we're using the mean function um the mean mean isn't in a data masking environment naturally and to get the mean of a column we have to we have to do something and we can't just do this um whereas we notice with like summarize we can say mean equals mean at MPG. Um, and what's happening here is summarize is in a data masking context. And it's just, it's looking for us first when we put in this object, 
it's looking for MPG inside the columns of our data object. Um, I wonder, I'm not sure if this breaks things, um, but if you do this, like, okay, it doesn't mind you doing that. Um, but it, as we saw, it does not like you doing this. And that's all really, um, it's all really data masking itself is doing. But when, when it gets quite useful is like, um, if we remember in filter, we got lots of different things, um, lots of different arguments we can chain together, like that evaluate to true through ellipsis. Well, if we're saying like, um, sale is greater than, right? Um, and we're saying MGP is greater than, let's say like 16 will cut a few. And we're doing something with this. Um, let's say it's less than 250. Well, if we were like out, if we, if, R wasn't doing, or if Deepfly wasn't doing some data masking for us, every time we add a new thing, we'd have to type this. Um, we'd have to type this. And it, it gets like, it gets quite cumbersome. Like if you think about the way you used to do some filtering, you can do like mount cars MPG is less than, hey, do you have to also? Yeah, you have, you have to do all this stuff, right? Like add the comma to get the columns and stuff. Um, and it just, you end up typing a lot. So filter saves you this typing. Um, so this makes sense. Certainly, you know, something that I make use of without being aware of what, it, what they had to do on the back end to make that possible. But can you uh, help define the words? Like what data is being mask do you do you know where that i feel like that would help me in yeah what day is so i if anyone else wants to take a stab feel free because i feel like my explanation is maybe not going to be that great here but it's like it's putting the data the mask the data is the mask right it's saying like you have this data object which you throw in with the pipe and if you look in deep layer filter we have that uh, dot data is our first argument mm -hmm. and it's whatever this thing is is now the mask it's like when you try to do stuff on objects it's going to look first in here it, see if it can find them and if it can't let's Arthur you're about to jump into I think no 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 I think I was, I was going to say exactly what you just said Jack I think it like the data masking it's a it's a tool that kind of helps with resolving the reference to the the name of objects like cyl like cylinder um you know if you just write it that way and then you know outside of deep plier R would be looking for a, a variable cyl that exists in the global environment but mm -hmm. here like within this context of 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 I guess uh, tidyverse stuff. It's resolving that reference and, and saying that it's a it's a it's a data variable. So the variable exists within the data frame, not in the global environment. But you could, yeah. I don't know if that helps or can further confuses things. Yeah. Think, thank you. Okay. Yeah, I, I think it helps. Um, so like, because yeah, if you look here, it's like well, still, it's not an object, and that's because in my global environment, I've got some stuff. In base art, we used to have attach function, I remember. How is this is different? The which function? Attach. Or oh, attach. When we attach whole data frame and we do not have to put the variables with the dollar. Hmm. It could be that it, so I, I started using R about two years ago. Um, okay. So I was very much came along when the tidy verse was very popular. So I know some base are, but I honestly, so summary women heights attach words. Oh, so you're attaching, you're, you're attaching an environment to the stuff that's happening. Yeah, I don't, I mean, maybe, maybe this is, 
how they built it. I'd have to um I'd have to go and read about attached personally to give like okay to to know about it. But I, I guess it's probably doing the same thing. Um and as it forms part of the tidy evaluation frame, which tidy evaluation is something we should look at more um as we go. It used with ellipsis and some other things, it becomes quite powerful or it saves quite a lot of time. I'm gonna check. Yeah, I, I I now program in R like seven, eight hours a day at work though. So it's like, um, I've spent a lot of time programming in R. Um, but yeah, let's, um, I think we wouldn't have time to do deep liar underscore by this thing. Well, not I think, we definitely just would not have time to do this justice. Um, so that will kind of roll over uh, for the next session. In the interval of the next session, so you've got two weeks, it would be really cool if somebody else wants to like uh, sign up to present. I think uh, if we take a really quick look, and sorry if you guys have to leave, um, but what I think we should do is just go on to columns, oops, um, because we've just done rows, and I think it does make sense to just, well, let's keep with data frame functions, and let's have a look at what you can do with columns. And you do see like mutate, pull's pretty cool, but like select, mutate, they're like, I don't know, along with filter, they're kind of like the the main workhorses, I guess, of deep player. Um, so I don't expect, or I wouldn't expect anyone who takes this on to like try to get through everything, um, but perhaps starting with columns and if whoever signs up, and if nobody signs up, I'll do it. Um, you can choose deep by by if you like. Let me stop. Jack, okay. one uh, question, if I may. Um, at what point did you want to bring in the the vignettes? Um, I ask because there's there's a I guess there's a vignette for the row wise. Um, well, I guess maybe that's more linked with grouping. Um, and there's a vignette for the the column the column wise uh, operations. Yeah, um, I don't. I really think because I think when we started out, we were kind of like whoever presents gets to decide what they want to do, right? Um, and if someone wants to do on the sign-up sheet, they want to put like, oh, I'm going to do the vignette for whatever, then I'm completely cool with that. Okay. Um, and over the next couple of weeks, so it's really, it's a bit of a busy time for me at the moment at work and stuff. But when I do get spare time, what I'm going to try to do is add a skeleton that can be like taken down easily. Um, but so that if you weren't sure, you didn't know that you wanted to do something particular, well, you could just take that thing that is on there for the week. But yeah, I think um, that's that's good for today. So yeah, thanks for coming, guys. Um, do check the sign up sheet if you can sign up or you want to. Don't don't feel afraid or uh, anything like that. You don't have to prepare anything if you don't want to. You can make code. You could make a repo, you could make shiny, you could just read the docs as we go. Um, it's up to whoever decides. So cool. See you guys in a couple of weeks. Thanks so much. See you in a few.